Welcome back. This is Breakfast Daily on City TV. Thank you so much for staying with us. Now, last week, we had a very powerful woman in studio with us. She walked us through her life, the importance of living a life of service and giving the best of yourself to the world. I'm talking about Esther Hover, CEO of Stratcom Africa. We're going to continue the conversation today, but we'll focus on her entrepreneurial journey. You know, why she started start her business, how it's been 26 years in. And if you have any questions for her, let us know with the hashtag Breakfast Daily and the WhatsApp line 0550 If you're outside Ghana, use the country code plus 233. Good morning. Good morning. Jimmy. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Thank you so much for coming again. <laughs> <laughs> so I enjoyed it the last time. Thank you, thank you. So following back on last week, we're just going to jump straight into entrepreneurship. At what point did you realize that you want to start your own business? I don't even know. I just wanted to serve. I wanted to use the expertise that I had gained and the knowledge that I had gained in school and also just to contribute to development, yeah. contribute to livelihood improvement and therefore at a certain point in my career when I happened to become unemployed, I started thinking about uh, setting up an enterprise mm. but before then I had identified so many uh, situations that communication could help mm. improve yeah. and one of them was also just looking at young people with no jobs yeah. and I brought the two together the three together so my love for communication um, the situations that I see around that require communication to, for improvement and the fact that there were people that could be employed in such an enterprise. So it actually started like a social enterprise hmm. where I would train, literally train young people. Very early they'd come and I would take them through communication, uh, the discipline of communication. Mm -hmm. And uh, over time it grew into a, a, an enterprise. And 26 years on, this is where we are. Wow. How did you land your first client? The whole thing started partly in my bedroom, in my kitchen, but <laughs> uh, also on my study table. The first client, I mean, that's an interesting <laughs> question to ask. Uh, what happened was a multinational was looking for a communications agency mm -hmm. and they came to me and said everybody was talking about me wow. and um, saying that we were the right people to come to and I was actually a bit shaken so we had to do a pitch mm -hmm. and we went and did the pitch at that time it was with transparencies and all that and at the last minute the printer conked out oh, as gosh. It was an old printer <laughs> But we went wow. and we delivered and they saw the value in us. And I mean, I was overwhelmed by what they said they saw in us, but uh, that became our first client. And guess what? They were so happy with that. They stayed with us for nine years. Wow. Yes. Yes. The only reason um, it had to change was that they were changing their business model using you know a more global integrating into a global agency system and all that but even then they were you know really sad not to be working nine years yes. wow. talk, talk that's to what you get when you uh, deliver excellence exactly that's my next question to young entrepreneurs who are watching us when they start out everyone is trying to think about how to make money how to you know get a customer we don't really think about retaining that customer, how important is that? It is very, very important to recognize that when you sign a contract with a client, it is a commitment. It is, it's not just a piece of paper. And for me, 
as a Christian, when I sign a contract, like Joseph, if I don't deliver on it, I'm sinning against my God. It's not just about delivering something to somebody. And remember that that person's satisfaction is your survivor. In Stratcom Officer, that, that's what we say. The client's satisfaction is our survival. You need to be true to your client, especially when you're delivering service outside of the client's space. The client needs to feel that your office is an extension of their office and that even when they are not there, you are delivering. So one of the things that we tell staff members when they come in is that you're working like a Joseph. There's nobody there. There was nobody there when Potiphar's wife tempted Joseph, but he didn't do it. Hmm. So you need to deliver. And you need to go beyond just the basics. So we'll get into it. But yeah. at this point, our viewers, if you want to contribute to the conversation, if you have any questions for Esther, let us know with the hashtag Breakfast Daily. The WhatsApp line is 0550585832. If you're outside Ghana, the country code is plus 233. Stratcom Africa is celebrating 26 years. It takes a lot to grow a business for 26 years. And if you're starting out today, no worries. She started at some point and she's gotten here. So just start. That's the most important thing. But at what point do you know that this thing that I'm, I'm growing is working? Because when you're starting in the beginning, you're getting your clients, you're training people, at what point did you realize that I'm onto something? When I realized that, first of all, relevance is important. You have to see that, you know, there's, you have to have a passion, you have to have a purpose, but the purpose and the relevance have to, the purpose and the passion have to be relevant mm. and so i was constantly doing analysis i'm a very analytical person i just don't act so you analyze the context vis-a-vis -vis what you're offering to ensure that there's a need for what you're doing and that you have the capability to deliver mm. and if you don't have the capability you take steps to ensure that you enhance your capability to deliver. And at a certain point, I realized that the clients were coming, people were acknowledging what we were doing, uh, and young, a lot of people were seeing us as the place to work. And uh, then we began to win awards, one after the other. And I realized that it, it was working. And I was happy with what I was doing. You have to have joy. You have to find joy. You have to find peace in what you're doing also. You can't just do it just because other people are doing it. I hear a lot of people do, saying that, you know, oh, they say this thing pays, or they say this thing works, or it's flashy to be a communications person because you get to speak to, you know, big people or you're on TV or radio and all that. It's a discipline. It's a, it's, it's a professional discipline. And you have to have the discipline to de uh, develop the skill and deliver effectively so that you survive. We develop the discipline and we continue to enhance our discipline in delivering excellence. And that continues to make us relevance, uh, relevant. And so I see it's working, even though there have been challenges, which I guess we'll talk about yes, later. Yes, we'll get into the challenges. But let's get back to 26 years ago. People didn't really understand what communication was. They thought maybe you had an extension of just running around for the businesses. How did you get your clients to understand that you have true value to offer them and they need you? Right from the beginning, I realized, in fact, somebody told me, Esther, are you serious? People don't understand this. Why don't you just get a job somewhere? And I said, I'm on a mission. I have been on a mission and will continue on that mission. Communication is essential 
for human existence and for developing countries such as Ghana, unless we recognize the importance of communication in everything we're doing, we will continue to be where we are. Look at the COVID-19 situation nine. World Health Organization has issued uh, guidelines. The government has issued directives. Unless that is communicated, and people gain the knowledge, accept and practice, where the guidelines will remain guidelines, the directives will remain directives. So even though at the time I knew the challenge that people didn't understand communication, and I tell you, people still don't understand communication. People believe that everybody talks, everybody writes, and therefore everybody can do communication. So people who have not even gone through the education, don't have the academic qualification, don't have the professional discipline, feel that they can practice communication. So at the time, I knew that I was getting into something in which I would need to work with people to appreciate that the fact that you're able to take two tablets of paracetamol does not make you a doctor, does not make you a pharmacist. So there was teaching and guiding as well. And that is why out of that, I developed uh, you know, another uh, um, enterprise, Scalehive, mm -hmm. where people are trained in communication and other soft skills. Wow, we'll get into that, but challenges you faced. Huh. Walk us through them all. <laughs> <laughs> many, many, many. I mean, I guess when you are passionate about something and when you are constantly working hard, um, you see the challenges as opportunities, and that's my orientation. In enterprise, you need to, be, you need to persevere. You need to be re resilient you need to be positive. So in the first place, I go out every morning as an entrepreneur. I go out like the biblical sower. I have seeds. I spray them around. Some fall on uh, dry ground. Some fall on rocks. Some fall on the pathway. They are trodden over. Look, I look at them. I take lessons from that and I focus on those that are falling on fertile ground. And so I don't bear grudges, I don't, because the challenges as an entrepreneur can sometimes make you even resentful. Some of the challenges are, the resources are not coming, you know, the, the, the Share money. Share some of those experiences <laughs> with us. Sometimes you're not able to pay salaries on time. Hmm. And staff members don't understand. And being a private, uh, in private enterprise and unfortunately having situations where sometimes private entrepreneurs uh, keep their resources to themselves, there might be perceptions that the money is there but you're not paid. It's just not there. The client is, has not paid or we have not delivered on time for the client to pay. Then there is just there was also the fact that communication was very young mm -hmm. and therefore you didn't have the talent. So when you recruit people, you are training them. So it's you're paying people and training them at the same time. That can also be very challenging. And unfortunately, Ghanaians, we sometimes don't believe in our own, mm -hmm. would rather give work to what we see as an international organization and not a local organization. That international organization started locally in somewhere. their country, yeah. they're local, and they were supported to go out. And therefore, we have to believe in our own. And in the, I'm not saying that we shouldn't work with international organizations, but there should be a national policy and a national orientation to build organizations 
and help Ghanaian organizations to also become global. What was the biggest challenge you had to deal with? Because we've talked about payment of salaries, we've talked about clients not paying on time, <laughs> we've talked about dealing with our own inferiority complex that yeah. may lead us to prefer a foreign yeah. brand over our own local brand. Walk us through the biggest challenge you faced. Um, there's in your also early days. the challenge of sometimes favoritism. How so? Oh, you have to know somebody who knows somebody who's somebody's friend and for friend. And <sighs> you're qualified for the job. It should be given to you. And then, of course, we have in this country the unfortunate, childish, I call it really childish behavior of four years of this politics and four years of that politics. Talk to any entrepreneur. They're facing that. And my message is we need to stop. We need to stop. Because the same people who are doing that on Sundays we are in church worshiping and then we come out and we are praying to God to grow our enterprises and we're using politics to make enterprises you know go forward and come back and so that is one of the things so it, you either know this person and sometimes also uh, people want you to do them little favors before you're given a job those kinds of things all confuse enterprise. I speak to other entrepreneurs and um, there are things that we need to look at and, and, and stop. Yeah. So, I, I mean, there are many challenges here and there. I can't okay. uh, talk Let me about narrow some down to challenges there. There was there. a time that my husband was in prison as well. You're and I, Yes, and I needed to work and take care of an imprisoned husband. How did you handle uh, that? When you have God, he handles things. No, but where do you find the strength? The strength is in truth. When you know the truth, and you're working with the truth, <laughs> you have strength all the time. That one I know. I have tried it, and it has worked. When you know the truth, the truth makes you free to work and flourish even in the midst of challenges. Uh, who's your husband, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> Just curious. We're talking about me here today. <laughs> okay. But how do you balance, you know, family, work? How important is it to find a partner who supports you and have your kids understand that you're building a legacy? It doesn't mean that you don't care about them, but you also want them to be proud of the work that you've done because kids by be respecting selfish. them by respecting their rights the, their rights to you as a mother their rights to you as a wife mm. and they also respecting your rights as an individual in their lives and so from birth i mean my children have always known everything i do and I thank God for those two boys. I mean, at this point, I don't know where Stratcom Africa would even be without them. One studied business, one studied communication. And they've grown up in the pot of communication. And they understand this business very well. But I respected them well enough to share with them everything that I was doing. Thank God I have a husband who's goal is you need to flourish you you have your business do what you have to do when i'm busy at the office and i can't go home for lunch he doesn't mind carrying my lunch to me at work he he's really supportive of what i am doing he stays out in his own corner and does his things but he respects what i do so i also respect the fact that they need me to do certain things at home. And I structure my work in such a way that I'm able to give them the love that they need. But you know, when people talk about entrepreneurship, I feel that every woman is an entrepreneur. Running a home is a big enterprise, which requires being a, 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 a knowing physics, chemistry, biology, home science, all of those put together. I mean, take a knife 
A knife is an instrument and it has to be engineered very well to cut those onions well without cutting your fingers. And then you put the combination of ingredients in the right proportions for people, for little children, a, a little baby boy to grow and become a manager or an engineer and he makes man-made things and women say, we are afraid of that thing that has been engineered. No, you did the biology. You put the things together in the right combination using tools of your kitchen as an engineer to do it for them. You balanced the money, the resources in the house to be able to run the home. So running a home is an enterprise and that's what we take to the office as well. So when I come home, I have sort of personnel or other colleagues that I'm working with and just the same way I manage things at the office, I should be able to manage things at home recognizing the different dynamics and the different stakeholders that I'm dealing with. So I have a wonderful family who support me. My two boys are there for me. They work with me. They, I, let, don't let me go there. <laughs> <laughs> now let's talk about challenges that female entrepreneurs face. Mm. You know, you get a call from a client, you think it's a very serious business meeting, he's trying to hit on you. Mm. You get a call from an investor, you prepare everything, you're ready to pitch to the person. That's not what it is. How do we handle situations like that? By going in with your skill. If it is not the skill that the person needs, then he has no business being in a meeting with you. You walk off. You walk off in dignity and you will get another client. As long as you have your skill, you have your capability, and it is acknowledged, you will get other jobs. Just walk off and don't even countenance that kind of thing. Women are great entrepreneurs. I told you about my mother last week. Look at Ghana. We have a very big informal sector, and most of the people in that environment no, no. are women. They're traveling to Wa, to Bulga, to all kinds of places to bring in, I mean, fish from the coast to the north and yams from the north. To, they make sure that this economy is moving. And we always say, what should women do to become entrepreneurs? We are yeah, entrepreneurs. Do. What should the country do to recognize this great resource that could actually enhance our economy? That is the question that should be asked. The entrepreneurship that women need, it's already there. What we need is the country to wake up, recognize that, leverage it to the benefit of the whole country and for our individual livelihood enhancement. Thank you. Now let's talk about giving back and paying back to society. What role, I mean, talk to us about mentorship. Mm. The girls you've mentored, mm. the young people you've mentored, mm. what drives you? <sighs> what drives me is the fact that I see people, I grew up in Commenda, Sekendi, and uh, I, an ordinary Ghanaian girl sitting here today on TV, and so it looks like I'm all that. I'm like every other Ghanaian girl out there. When I see potential in somebody, I think sometimes I even drive them too hard. And so Stratcom Africa itself has been a pot in which many people, many young uh, women have been mentored. I'm really proud of the people I see around today who worked through 26 years. So you can imagine the number of young ladies that have gone through Stratcom Africa. I'm very proud of what they're doing now. One of the 
structured mentorship programs I put together is a program called SHARE, Soaring Higher, Achieving Real Excellence. And it is a program in which I bring together a few ladies and we talk about the challenges that we face and how we overcome them or are not able to overcome them. And I've been amazed that each time we've met, people, it's, it's a very, I'm, I'm a trained facilitator as well, so I facilitate these sessions. I create a safe space for people to share and people cry, people laugh, and it's been through that, you know, I've got a network of amazing women from whom I learn as well. My belief in mentorship is you yourself have to be mentored to be able to mentor. Hmm. You have to understand the person that you're mentoring. So I'm very humble about saying I'm mentoring somebody. I feel that it's, it's an, an exchange and uh, I get to know the person, they get to know me and we benefit from each other. And so there's that and there's read it, write it, say it. Um, in Stratcom Africa, our work requires reading, <laughs> writing, analytical thinking, and creative skills. And I realized that sometimes there were challenges with that. And so we put together a program called Read It, Write It, Say It Better. Recently, we've actually conducted one for children of media personnel. Oh, wow. During this period that children at home, children are at home. We worked with uh, uh, Madame Shula Gleiman, mm -hmm. uh, an amazing educationist, to develop, read, uh, to get reading material for children to read, and then they answered questions. But in the past, we've uh, implemented this at the Kanda cluster of schools, Komenda, my hometown, <laughs> Osu cluster of schools, to help children read better. We use drama and puppets and all that and children really like that and I focus a lot on, on women, uh, on the girls when I'm doing that. I had the privilege of also working with UNICEF on the Sarah Communication Initiative, wow. an amazing tool for dealing with female uh, teenage challenges mm -hmm. among females yeah. and uh, that is one of the uh, fond memories in my uh, professional work and I still have that material and use it with young children as much as uh, especially women as much as I can. Wow. Thank and then you. of course the, there's a Ghana Garden and Flower show. Oh yes, show. you have to talk about that. <laughs> I have to come and we garden together. Please, we'll do that. <laughs> please. I wish that we could have had this I interview know, me too. in my garden. The Ghana Garden and Flower show and I'm encouraging a lot of women to get involved in there. I mean yesterday I was in my vegetable garden. I'm focusing more on herbs and spices and vegetables now that I'm home most of the time, we've been mm -hmm. teleworking. And I'm really enjoying it because then I go to my backyard and get food for the kitchen. And I use my kitchen waste as manure. We'll, we'll do garden. a DIY <laughs> segment with you from your home and go through the entire process. But thank you so much You're for welcome. being with us, thank Esther you. Kova. And we're so thank proud. You of everything you've achieved. We're Thank happy you, you exist and happy anniversary. Thank you. I have to talk about Co, the COVID prefect. Okay. That is a, an initiative that we are undertaking during this time. It's, it's a cartoon series that we have done as an organization. And I want to salute the young uh, creative people in Stratcom Africa who just took a paper I wrote on uh, COVID-19 requires behavior change and we Tended talked about that. it and then how do we follow the, the COVID prefix it's on uh, YouTube okay. it's on GTV nice. you will we will we'll send it. it to you okay. uh, it's on graphic online it's on Obonu FM <laughs> we just search for it and we'll yes, find it yes just search for it and you'll find it our focus this week is on stigma 
and discrimination. Very important. We've done uh, social distancing, hand washing. We have a lot. So, and it's on WhatsApp. When you get it on your WhatsApp, you can share uh, please it. share it. We yeah, will. thank That's you. That's one of the ways in which we're serving. We can country. go on and on and yes. on and on and on. Yes. Thank you so thank much you. for being with thank us. Thank you. And thank you thank at home you. for staying. Don't go anywhere. We have a lot more for you. We'll be right back.